everyone, and welcome to Meow Mix, the Carolina Panthers podcast. My name is Steven. My name is Jerry. And on this episode, we are going to look at how the Panthers stack up in the NFC South. And we're only looking at offense today. Our next episode, we'll look at defense. We're basically going to go around the NFC South and look at the different position groups and see how the Panthers stack up. Yeah. We'll start with wide receiver in Atlanta because Julio's gone. Everybody clap and cheer again. Just It's mm-hmm. so nice that he's gone. Yeah, yeah. So I'm showing that Calvin Ridley will be the number one. And then they're going to have Russell Gage, Tajay Sharp as the other two starting type of receivers. Mm-hmm. And then, I mean, you're talking Alamedi Sakichi, Frank Darby, Z- Christian Lake. I mean, Cordero Patterson, Patterson is there. Um, yeah, I mean, after, honestly, after Calvin Ridley, there's a pretty big fall off. Yes. I mean, Russell Gage had some moments last year. Um, that Zacchaeus had some moments last year, and then Cordero Patterson has been kicking around for a while. Yeah, Tajay Sharp but, had a couple decent seasons in mm-hmm. Tennessee. Yeah, uh, I'm not impressed by Atlanta's. I mean, and that's been a real stalwart of their team for several years now. Mm-hmm. Uh, but losing Julio is a big hit. I mean, he's by far the best receiver on that team. So Ridley's good. I mean, I would put Ridley up there with DJ Moore. Oh, yeah. I think Ridley of, and DJ Moore are on the same yeah. level. Yeah. So uh, Atlanta, that's their wide receiver position group. We'll move on to uh, New Orleans now. Looking a little better. Michael mm-hmm. Thomas, one of the one of the best in the league. And then Traquan Smith and then Marquez Callaway listed as the starters. And this is from ESPN.com, by the way, the depth charts. Uh, and then after that, and again, you know, Juwan Johnson, K1 Baker, Aesop Winston, Deontay Harris, just not a ton of guys after Michael Thomas. And Traquan Smith's good. Yeah. Um, Callaway had some moments again, but after that number one guy, there's not a lot there. In terms of you know, strictly wide receiver, we're talking about here. I mean, is Traquan Smith a real number two? I mean, I, I I don't know him that well enough, but I mean, that's what we're talking about. He's the number yeah. two now. Yeah, he he would basically be the number two guy. Um, um, yeah, last I, season I, he had four hundred yards, <clears throat> four hundred forty eight yards. Yeah. Oh, I think he was hurt a little bit last year, maybe. So I don't know. Uh, but I'm not impressed with that receiver group either nope. as a whole. Uh, but the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Whew. Now that's a receiver group I'm impressed with. Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, Antonio Brown. And then you got Scotty Miller. You got Tyler mm-hmm. Johnson, both of whom had some big, big catches last year. I mean, Scotty Miller, Tom Brady loves Scotty Miller. Yeah. Um, Justin Winston, Jalen Darden, Josh Franklin. Uh, but those top really, they go five deep, pretty strong. I mean, Tyler Johnson would probably be a starter in Atlanta or New Orleans. Well, you know. yeah, Scotty Miller actually had more yards than the number two in New Orleans. He yeah. had 500 yards. So yeah. last year. So that's, uh, that's impressive. And then of course you've got Carolina. Mm-hmm. We've got DJ Moore, um, Robbie Anderson. Terrace Marshall, David Moore, kind of depends yeah. on how things work out. Um, Shy and Smith then, and Silver. Yeah, Shy Smith, yeah. So if you're looking at rankings, and of course we've gone pretty deep into uh, Carolina's position group, so we're not going to spend a ton of time talking about that again. Go check out a couple of our podcasts to go for that. But um, rankings, I mean, I think obviously – Tampa's number one yeah. and then nothing you got to put Carolina number two yeah I would put Carolina number two I'd, I'm gonna go, New Orleans, go New Orleans over yeah yeah just because of Michael Thomas that's exactly Thomas, what I was better than is. Calvin Ridley yeah um but yeah I think you've got Tampa pretty high one Carolina yeah. I wouldn't say we're right on their heels but we're not you know we're definitely two we're not if they're 100, we're, we're like a 90. Yeah. And then you've got, you know, a 75 and a 60 down there for, for the other two. So, Whew. 
All right. Now, shall we go ahead and go to quarterback? Yeah, let's go to quarterback. Probably where we should have kicked it off. But uh, Matt Ryan, the ageless one. Or, nah, I guess not really ageless, but he's been in Atlanta for a while. Uh, AJ McCarron and Felipe Franks backing him, backing up Matt Ryan. And I think they signed AJ McCarron this year. Yeah, they did. Uh, Matt Ryan is going to... It's going to be interesting to see how he copes with life without Julio Jones. Yeah, it'll be interesting, too, because he's going to have a new coordinator. He's going to have everything all new again. Yeah. So, And with that contract, he's guaranteed to be there this year and next. So it'll be interesting. He's a, He's been a really good quarterback. I don't think he's <clears> been <throat> a pro or a Hall of Fame type of quarterback, but he's had a very solid career. Yeah, he was an MVP a couple yeah. years ago. Took a team to the Super Bowl. Very similar uh, accomplishments to Cam Newton in, in terms of what he's accomplished. You know, uh, of course, the stats are going to be different. He, yeah. He's got way more of the throwing stats. Cam's got more of the running stats. But in terms of like Hall of Fame resumes, I think they're fairly similar. Um, unless you're just looking at the historic accomplishments from Cam. Uh, moving on to New Orleans, interesting battle there for quarter or for starting quarterback with Drew Brees retiring. You got Jameis Winston or Taysom Hill. Sounds like Taysom Hill is uh, kind of got an, a bit of an upper hand at this point, but wouldn't be surprised at all if Jameis ends up taking that spot. I, I think that's all hearsay. I think that's smoke. I think Jameis Winston is there. I think he's starting. Uh, we'll but see. I could be wrong. I mean, he has been, been all about Taysom Hill for years, yeah. for years before Jameis Winston was even considered to be on that team. So I would not be surprised if they gave him a shot to win the job. Uh, like a real shot. Uh, and then you've got Ian book and Trevor Simeon. Now Ian book was a draft pick this year out of Notre Dame. Uh, and Trevor Simeon was a, a former starter in Denver. So that's decent depth there. I mean, yeah. I wouldn't say that, you know, you'd want to start your season with Ian Book or Trevor Simeon, but in terms of backups, that's not bad. No, at least you have some talent behind them, especially with Ian Book that maybe, you know, Peyton could groom. Because yeah. Taysom Hill's in his 30s. Let's not right, act yeah. like he's, yeah. you know, a 23-year-old, 24-year-old. No, he's not. I wouldn't say he's like the long-term answer there, but I could easily see him you know, if Sean Payton really wants to give him, him the shot, you know, he's not old. He would be in it. He's in his athletic prime. So All next right. we got Tampa. Yep. In Tampa, we have Tom Brady. That's the ageless wonder. Yeah. That's the ageless wonder. Uh, Blaine Gabbert's backing him up. Ryan Griffin and Kyle Trask was drafted. Yeah. Blaine Gabbert. In the second round, by the way. Yeah. Blaine uh, Gabbert, you know, started quite a few seasons and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And Kyle Trask is just going to be that guy that they're going to try to groom to replace yep. Brady. Yep. And then Carolina, we got Sam Darnold. We got PJ Walker. We got Will Greer. And uh, obviously we're going into the season with Sam Darnold as the starter in Sharpie. Uh, we'll yeah. see how that works out. <laughs> Nobody knows how that's going to work out. We are all hopeful, of course. Uh, but I think, I think it's, you know, obviously you've got Brady number Brady one. one. So, so Tampa, Tampa Bay is number one. one on this one again. Yep. Then Atlanta. Yeah. And and probably not too far behind Brady there, honestly. Uh, and then, I mean, I think you – I don't know. I, I'm going to go New Orleans because I think Jameis Winston has proven that he can throw in this league. Yeah, he can to throw the other team. his team Quite and the opponent's team. <laughs> But he he can throw for you know five thousand yards, thirty touchdowns, and thirty yeah. interceptions. Right. That's Sam Darnold hasn't come close to that. No, Sam Darnold hasn't had nearly the talent that Jameis Winston has had no. in his career. Though I mean, we saw what Brady did at forty three years old last year with that same talent that Jameis. Oh had. yeah. Uh, so yeah, I mean. I would say if it's Jameis, the New Orleans three, if it's Taysom Hill, I'm going to put New Orleans four and give Carolina the nod at three. I, I will I will agree with that. If the Taysom yeah. Hill is starting for New Orleans, I would put Sam 
and the Carolina quarterbacks at three. Yeah. But I don't, I think that's all hogwash. I think it's a big smoke screen. Could be. Uh, Carolina definitely has the better receiving talent when you yeah. compare them to New Orleans. So uh, I do think that Darnold is going to have a better chance to succeed than either of those guys. Uh, let's move on to a position that Carolina should be pretty good at health fingers crossed uh, running back again we'll start with Atlanta Atlanta has Mike Davis former Carolina Panthers starting then they uh-huh. have Cordell this is according to ESPN Cordell Patterson yeah. as their backup running back Quadri Olison and Tony Brooks James that ain't good no, I mean Mike Davis not. Mike Davis filled in nicely for Mm -hmm. CMC last year. But he struggled down the stretch too. Yeah. He had, he had like what three or three or four really good games. Mm -hmm. And the rest of them were pretty pedestrian. Um, And you took away Julio Jones. You took away a major weapon there that would draw defense. So I don't know, man, I think Mike Davis cashed in. And even his contract wasn't huge by any means. No. But he sort of cashed in on having a good year here in Carolina. I don't think it's going to work out for Atlanta. I don't either. I, I was kind of shocked they didn't draft somebody. Yeah. But. I'm surprised. And I would not be surprised at all if one of these, you know, inevitable veteran running backs gets cut that they don't end up in Atlanta. Where's Frank Gore playing at right now? Shady Hills nursery, uh, nursing home. <laughs> uh, yeah, honestly, like someone like that, or you know, I don't even know who else will be, would be out there, but there will have options. Uh, moving on to New Orleans, uh, this one is a strong group. Alvin mm-hmm. Kamara as the starter, and then you got Latavius Murray, who has been a starter for in this league. Dwayne Washington and Ty Montgomery, uh, you know, the hybrid running back slash wide receiver that's a good staff there i mean that's kamara, a really good uh yeah. kamara and murray have proven that they're a good one too yeah over and over again yeah. even when kamara has gotten injured murray steps in and plays great for those one or two games and then it goes back to being you know kamara 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 oh mm-hmm. wait here's murray just yeah they're still murray, it's, good it's honestly a really good spot for murray because him as a starter he always seemed to get hurt he mm-hmm. always just seemed to be one of those guys that it wouldn't hold up over the course of a full season. Uh, and Kamara, honestly, is that guy as well, honestly. Um, so them sharing the load is – that's nice for New Orleans. Um, Tampa Bay, decent staff yeah. for them as well. Yeah. Uh, Leonard Fournette starting, Ronald Jones Jr., and then Giovanni Bernard was signed in the offseason as well. Mm-hmm complimentary yes. third down back out yeah, of it gives them another element um and then uh yeah i mean of course leonard is we know what he is he's just a bruiser and he's gonna he's gonna you know i i have always thought he's a little overrated i mean of course coming out of the coming out of lsu we all wanted him yeah. but since then i just he's never really lived up to that promise he puts up good numbers but he didn't put up good numbers last year he only put up 300 yards last year. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, he, again, when did he come into New Tampa Bay? It wasn't, wasn't the very beginning of the season, was it? Yeah. He was a uh, preseason or training camp brought in, I believe. But he yeah. does seem to have gained more momentum towards the end of the season. Trying to, yeah. He, he played 13 games, only started three. He only had 97 rushes last year, you know, overall. So didn't play a ton for them. But uh, Ronald Jones carried the load nicely. And then you've got Gio Bernard, who's going to be that guy that is going to catch the ball out of the backfield. He's not what he once once was. No. But he's very talented and has great hands. So that's a good staff. And then you've got Carolina, who at the top, Chris McCaffrey, of course. Uh, and then – I guess Chuba, Chuba Hubbard is going to be main backup. Rodney Smith. And Reggie Bonovan. And Reggie Bonovan. Out. So, uh, what do you think? I mean, I either Carolina or New Orleans at the top, I think. 
I think I'm going to go New Orleans just because they have Latavius Murray as a backer up mm-hmm. that's proven that he can play and play well in the NFL. Well, Chuba Hubbard, very excited for, mm-hmm. love the draft pick. And this could be where they actually are number one, but we just don't know with Chuba right now. So I'm going to give it to New Orleans and then Carolina has two and then Tampa and Atlanta I think that, way down there. Yeah, I think that's a very logical way of looking at it. Um, gun to my head, I think I would put Carolina number one just because I think McCaffrey is better than Kamara. Yeah. Um, and I'm very, I'm just extremely high on Chuba. I think he's going to be a very, very good backup. Um, and, you know, Latavius Murray is also very good, but Chuba, I think, has a chance to be one of those guys that can carry a team. Honestly, I think he's going to be durable. I think he's going to be really good. And then I like Bonifant. I mean, and yeah. Smith had a, a couple of plays last year that made you think maybe he could be something. But I think Bonifant has filled in as a starter for CMC a couple of games and has looked good. You know, he's broken big plays. He's he's fine. So I think I would go Carolina, New Orleans, and then uh, the rest of the rankings are would be the same. Yeah. Atlanta down there being one of the worst running back rooms in yeah. the league. Honestly, Atlanta is, not, I don't think they're going to have a very good season <laughs> as we continue on here. I mean, looking at, uh, well, we'll say this for Atlanta. They're pretty set on tight end. Uh, yeah. Yeah. They and drafted Kyle I Pitts. Think, yeah. I was going to say they got Kyle Pitts and Hayden Hurst. Hayden Hurst. Yep. Former one, number one uh, draft pick. So yeah. I'm assuming they're going to use more tight end running out as receivers. Than- they're going to have to. I mean, and Kyle Pitts honestly could uh, could probably line up wide. I mean, he's got a, a big wide receiver body, uh, or he's got the big wide receiver skills at least in a huge tight end body. So I could see, could honestly see him maybe not matching Julio Jones' production, but giving them that threat that Julio Jones was, especially in the red zone where Julio Jones honestly wasn't was never great in the red no. zone. Well, so. Uh, yeah, uh, Atlanta, very good tight end room, I guess. Uh, moving on to New Orleans. Uh, Adam Troutman. Yep, that, Nick- yeah, there you go. That's all you need to know about New Orleans, Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> Never heard of their starter. <laughs> Nick Vanette, Garrett Griffin. I am kind of shocked because usually New Orleans always yeah. has like that halfway decent. I- yeah. I was thought Jared Cook was still here. I was yeah. No, no, that, that's that. That is a. I mean, that's not a good tight end room. No, I mean, I, I don't, don't. I don't know how good you know they could be, but I mean, Troutman, expected starter, was a third round draft pick last year. Mm-hmm. Um, only target sixteen times, but he caught fifteen of them. So, well, that's good. One that's of them good. was against Carolina for five <laughs> yards. So. <laughs> How did you how did you pull that information out? Uh, ESPN. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah. So I mean, uh, not a great room there. M- no. Moving on to Tampa, very good room here. Gronk as the starter, then OJ Howard, then Cameron Brait and Tanner Hudson. Honestly, Gronk, Howard, and Brait will all play probably equally, and, and they could start on any team. Yeah, or on most teams in the NFL. Right. Maybe not the Chiefs. Yeah, but, well, uh, I said most. I mean, obviously, yeah. you're going to have those, like, San Francisco. But they're three legitimate, talented, starting caliber tight ends. Yeah. And Gronk had a decent year last year, and he didn't even work out in the offseason, he said. Did you hear right. about this? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That he, like. He was sending in fake videos. videos. He just changed yeah. his shirt one day and did yeah. a bunch of workouts, and then yeah. he just would send them in. A- <laughs> yep. Oh, man. Uh Gronk, Can I classic. just say for Gronk being, I, that's a smart, I mean, I don't want to say smart, but it was very <laughs> smart. It was clever. Yeah. It was clever. Yeah. He came up, he found a way to beat the system. Uh, <sighs> then Carolina, we've got a uh, completely reworked tight end room here. Dan Arnold, uh, penciled in as a starter right now. Uh, Ian Thomas is listed as backup. Matt Rule has given him the kiss of death in this offseason by saying how good he looked. Uh, then you got Chami Tremble, draft pick, and then Colin Thompson, who uh, I think caught a, a touchdown last year for the Panthers, and you know made a few plays. 
Uh, so again, this is one of those spots for the Panthers where pretty up in the air. We don't really know what to expect. I really like this group. Uh, I, I, like I definitely like sign. it better than most of the years recent. I like Dan Arnold. I like him being that, you know, red mm-hmm. zone threat. He looked pretty good. He's a guy who went on draft and has worked his way up and now got a decent sized contract. And then I really like Tommy Trimble. I love the blocking aspect and the athletic ability that mm-hmm. he could blossom into something pass catching. That Everybody's being said, saying George Kittle. Everybody is saying George Kittle is, is that's who he is, which well, would be amazing. I mean, he, God. He, yeah, if he could become that, that's great. But yeah, that there's been one George Kittle. So yeah, yeah. there could be two. Yeah. Maybe that someone will be the next Tommy Trimble one day. So number hope. one rank, <laughs> obviously Tampa. Or, I don't know. I mean, if you look at Atlanta, with Pitts and Hurst, I mean, they don't have the maybe the depth that New Orleans has, or I'm sorry, that Tampa Bay has. But I think at the but top, you're also better. in love with Kyle Pitts. He- yeah, I think Kyle Pitts is going to be, uh, I mean, just a, an absolute beast. Uh, let's give it to Tampa just because they've got the experience. They've got the, the championship pedigree now. Um, and they're still, they still have very good talent. Yeah, I mean they they have high end talent. So we got Tampa Bay one A and Atlanta one B. And then I think Carolina is well yeah, ahead I, of New Orleans. I agree. Yeah. Except I go one Tampa two Atlanta. I don't even one A and one B those. <laughs> I don't. I don't. I don't believe in a rookie tight end out of the gates. I, well, what is? I, that? I, I mean, we have a we have a, a bet here uh, with Kyle Pitts. So. I don't exactly remember what it is, but I know Cal Pitts is going to win, whatever it is. <laughs> um, all right. And now let's move to the OL. We're just going to look at the starters, offensive line. We're going to look at the starters. Um, and we're going to use, uh, you know, a, a website or two to kind of help us with the rankings because it's always hard to rank uh, yes. offensive linemen when they're not your team. <laughs> so we'll look at Atlanta here. Um, and we're just going to go from left tackle to right tackle down the line. So Jake Matthews, Matt Gano, Matt Hennessy as center, Chris Lindstrom, and then Caleb McGarry. Uh, they're ranked fairly low. Yeah. Uh, in this rankings website we're using, I think they're 29th in the league. Um, and I think they've got a rookie who is going to be competing at that at one of those Left guard spots. Guard. So, mm-hmm. so uh, we're going to say not good for them. Uh, moving on to New Orleans, looking better. Yeah, looking better. Taron Armstead, Armstead Andreas Pete, Eric McCoy, Cesar Ruiz, and Ryan Ramchek. And that's a really good <clears throat> tackle. Taron Armstead and Ryan Ramchek. Oh, yeah. And then our uh, Andrews Andre. Pete is also very good. So that's, uh, you know, the website we're using, and they've got they're ranked fourth. And uh, I would. Uh, completely agree with that i mean i've heard of several of those guys so (laughs) that's usually a sign that they're pretty good uh moving on to tampa bay i mean now here's where the you know the rich get richer donovan smith ali marpet ryan jensen alex kappa and tristan Wirfs. i mean number one by far Probably in the entire league, not just the yeah. NFC South. I mean, Donovan Smith and Tristan Wirfs played awesome last year. Mm-hmm. Ali Marpet, same. I mean, Kappa. I mean, they all they're all very good, and they're good together. The rich get richer. I mean, are, yeah. yeah. They they brought back everybody from that started for them last year. That's so. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna just agree with the rankings <laughs> of uh, Tampa's one, New Orleans two. Carolina's three somehow, even though yeah, we let's don't look, even... let's go oh, ahead yeah, and look I... at Carolina. Um, and and you know, ESPN. Well, again, we're using ESPN's uh, depth chart here. They've got Cameron Irving at left tackle, Pat Elfine, Matt Paradis, John Miller, and then Taylor Moten bringing up the right tackle spot. You could put Brady Christensen in potentially at left tackle or guard, honestly. Mm-hmm. Um, Dennis Daly Cam- has a chance at one of yeah. the guard spots. Yep. I mean, Greg Little is out there in the world. We don't know 
what he's doing, but he's out there. So, I mean, uh, they do this, this, uh, the undroppables.com rankings we're using does have Carolina 17th, which that seems high. it seems very high, but honestly, if they're like in the middle of middle of the pack, I would be so happy. I'd be pretty happy with that. I mean, honestly, um, and they do have Brady Christensen starting at left tackle with Dennis Daly at guard. So mm-hmm. actually, they don't even have uh, Miller starting at guard. So I don't know how much we trust this site, but it well, gives us I a mean, decent idea. Gives us yeah. a decent idea. The good thing, but either is way, I think I'd still put Carolina few, third. We do have quite a few like guard slash tackles that you know whoever's yeah. whoever wins in training camp is going to get those spots. Yeah, and honestly, you know, we sort of I don't want to say we made fun of it, but we we're like, oh, versatility, versatility. That's what they're that's what they're valuing above all else. Well, you know, given how often injured offensive linemen are, especially for the Panthers. I still would I prefer some ice I agree. Stud left tackle. Like I agree. But if tackle. you can't if you can't get that, then having guys that can play multiple positions across that line is useful right it's worthwhile so i would agree that we're gonna go ahead and put carolina at that third spot because honestly atlanta's offensive line is not good i matt ryan could be in real trouble this year honestly yeah i mean they if i mean look they they're we're guessing they're not gonna have much of a run game yeah i mean russell gage is their number two so i mean you're gonna have to rely on Ridley and Kyle Pitts on a lot of those yeah. dump off passes quick, get the ball out of his hand. Russell Gage, who was hurt a lot last year too. So I don't know how healthy that guy's yeah. going to be. Um, I mean, you've got Davis who can catch the ball out of the backfield as well. Mm-hmm. So, you know, he does add a little bit there to the passing game, but if that offensive line isn't going to block, you know, at a high level, then you're not going to have much time for Matt Ryan to get the ball off. And you're not going to have much blocking for Mike Davis to do anything in the run game. So, uh Atlanta I think you know if we're kind of looking at offenses overall here maybe ranking the offenses overall yeah I would put Atlanta last I definitely would and I don't think it's very close uh and then I think I'd put New Orleans in that three spot I I, this is so difficult because you really don't know what the quarterback position is going to give you on either yeah um New Orleans or Carolina well, I'm looking. So I'm going to go two A and two B with Carolina. Oh, at you're a. you're doing the same thing I did. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I'm just looking at you know, if I'm going to assume that Darnold is average and the offensive line is average, I think the rest of the team is well above average. Oh yeah, and I think New Orleans, you know, they've got a an above average offensive line, but outside of that, I think everything else is is average at best. I agree. Uh, running backs, running backs are they've got uh, well above average running backs, but I, yeah, it's close, it's close. But I would I would give the nod to Carolina. It sounds like you're giving a little bit of a nod to Carolina, and then Tampa Bay is at the very very. As top. long as Sam Darnold can play decent, yeah, like a number fifteen quarterback <clears throat> in the league, this team can be yeah really I mean, really offensively good. Would you be, let's say he is like 3,500 yards, 19 touchdowns, 11 interceptions, something like that. I mean, is that something you'd be happy with? No, absolutely not. So what, what, what kind of, are you looking for 4,500 yards, 25 touchdowns, 10 I'm interceptions? I'm looking for a close to more like four, at least 4,000 yards. I mean, mm-hmm. Teddy Bridgewater threw – 3,700 yards, 15 touchdowns, and 11 interceptions last year. Yeah. I mean, so you're so actually would, asking for a worse season from Sam Darnold. No, I said 19 touchdowns, 11 interceptions. Same inter- interceptions, I thought you more said touchdowns. 17, but either way. No. And slightly I would say no, because this because he has so many weapons on the outside. He <clears> needs <throat> to throw more yards than that. I mean, honestly, if, you, if those stats that I threw out there, if that's what Darnold had mm-hmm. – then that could have been the difference between like three or four wins this year for the Panthers. True. But I'm expecting, I'm hoping 
for more from Sam Darnold, if that makes sense. Yeah, I because, just think that because I, they're banking on him becoming the guy. So then you don't think middle of the pack is going to be good enough then? Because I think what I, those stats that I just rattled off, I think off those are would I be kind of middle Teddy of the pack. Stats. Was middle of the pack. Yeah, last I think year. he was ranked between like fifteen and twenty most of the year. He was right there in the middle most of the year. Now he didn't end up there because you know he ended up getting hurt a little hurt that towards the end of the year and everything, but. Um, yeah, I mean that's that he was right around the middle. And, and my question is too. You're saying middle, but his stats may be in the middle, but he has the weapons to be. Even if he's mediocre, he should be getting the ball to Robbie Anderson, DJ Moore, Terrace Marshall, Christian McCaffrey, and then they can break it off. And you know, that's why I think four thousand yards for him. I, I agree. I think um, that would be great. Yeah, I was just I was just throwing it out there to see what you, what uh, what you would say. Um, I do want to ask you this: so, do you think with this offense, with Christian McCaffrey here, you know, we're gonna hope for the full season of Terrace Marshall being drafted, uh, bringing back Anderson, bringing back DJ Moore, um, adding Dan Arnold and mm-hmm. whatever Tommy Trimble could be, and then maybe upgrading the offensive line a little bit. Would you have rather seen year two of Teddy Bridgewater or are you more excited about Sam Darnold for this year? I know neither one of them is super exciting, but which would you have rather seen? (sighs) Which do you think would have given the Panthers a better chance to win? Draft Kyle uh, Fields. (laughs) Justin Fields. Justin Fields. Uh, between the two, Sam Darnold, because he is 23 years old. He does have that first round pedigree. He does have a cannon arm. And Teddy Bridgewater, he didn't have that arm because he, or at least he never trusted it. In watching Sam Darnold's highlights, he'll push the ball down the field if given time. Yeah. And I think that was a big thing. I know you said that Teddy Bridgewater was middle of the pack. I guess the thing for me was, was watching him. He didn't mm-hmm. play like he was middle of the pack towards the end of the year. He was, he was yeah. doing too many dump offs. He wasn't forcing the ball. He looked like he played to not lose the game. He would have been a perfect John Fox style quarterback. Yeah, I agree. Um, and I think for the future of the franchise, I think the answer is obvious that you would rather have Darn. Right. And, and that's why I'm he's so young and yep. still has the potential and all that. Um, I, I don't know. For me, I think I would have rather seen another year of Teddy just to give him the opportunity with a healthy, you know, full off season, a healthy Christian McCaffrey. Um, I think Teddy has, has talent. He has talent, but I saw too many times where he was just too scared to pull the trigger deep. Yeah, no, I agree with you. I agree with you. And I felt like this offense was meant to be big splash plays, but the quarterback was a they, reserve yeah. type of quarterback and it just didn't mesh. Yeah. They did de- the, the offense definitely did not fit the talent at quarterback, which is surprising because I feel like when Matt rule came in, that was sort of his MO was he will fit his scheme around the talent on the team. But they went after a quarterback that just couldn't couldn't get it done. So, yeah. all right. Well, uh, I think that's going to do it. Yep. We want to thank everyone for listening. If you like the show, please let your friends know. Please follow us on Twitter at Meow Mix Podcast. If you have any questions or comments, you can email us at mailbag at meowmixpodcast.com. And if you leave us a five-star review with a comment on Apple Podcasts, we'll read it on the show. We'll be back in a couple of weeks. I'm on vacation next week uh, with without bringing any sort of computing equipment with me. So no podcast next week, but uh, we will be back the week after and we'll look at the defense. Where do the Panthers stack up on defense in the NFC South? Uh, It'll be and I'm, better I'm looking than forward last to year. That. I was going to say, I'm, lo- I'm looking forward to that. I think it's going to be surprisingly positive for us. Um, so until next time, everybody stay safe out there and keep pounding. <laughs>